my old toolbox the other day, I came across my old Weller instant heat gun. Uh, if anyone's never seen one of these before, basically it's a transformer with a dead short across it. Um, the dead short being a tip that gets very, very hot very quickly. And these were basically all the rage for field engineers when I was doing uh, TV repairs many years ago. Um, and they were, you know, basically you wanted to solder something, you pick, got this out, plugged it in, press the button, a couple of seconds later the tip is red hot. You can do your soldering, let it go, um, and it would cool down fairly quickly. So you didn't have to sit and wait for a soldering iron to warm up. You could do soldering fairly quickly. Sadly, this old beastie has been sat in my toolbox, uh, which got stuffed into the shed many years ago. And unfortunately, the toolbox got flooded and this got soaked in water. So I thought, well, it... it it could be useful in this day and age. I don't know whether it is or not, but I thought just out of um, nostalgia, I would try and get it to work again. Um, my instant thought is that the switches had it. Probably the, it's rusted completely. The transformer has probably rusted. So I thought, oh, I'll take it apart. No, needless to say, I couldn't even undo the screws. They were rusted. Uh, as you can see, there's rust on there. I've put some um, uh, rust um penetrating oil on there in the hope that i may be able to get this apart um it may well be uh the the yeah in fact actually the tip of the the screwdriver is the tip of the screw is gone um that one that won't turn let's just try a uh, bigger screwdriver i may no i can't even get that in there uh let's try a medium sized screwdriver with a heavier handle Oh yeah, that one's that one's beginning to go, I think. Uh, or as as the tip, yeah, <laughs> I think the tip's gone off. So I'm going to have to drill these out. I think that's probably going to be the only way I'm going to get in there. Inside, I'm probably going to find that the transformer's rusted. Anyway, let's get a drill on it and see what we can do. Okay, got a drill. Let's give it a go. See if we can get into this beastie. <laughs> So let's open her up and see what is left of oh hmm. Well obviously the uh the switch has probably rusted itself solid. Now, is the transformer salvageable? <laughs> of course, yes, there was a little light bulb on there as well. I forgot that. That's just completely disintegrated. Let's take the cable clamp out. I think we're probably just going to have to cut that one off. If I drill it, it's just going to... Cable clamp is just cardboard anyway. So, is it just the former the thing? Could we just brush that off and clean it? I think we could. The actual transformer itself seems to be okay. Not sure what that is. Just like a splash of solder, probably from a repair that I did once. Right, okay. So apart from the actual muck and mess, we could well be all right. Let's clean that up. Right, a uh, little bit of a clean up. I've uh, cleaned the bench off and a little bit of a brush off of this. So what are we left with? We've got uh, two screws which came through, two nuts and bolts rather. So they were rusted so I can replace those. This one's still stuck in there. Let's see if that will come out. Oh, it's well and truly got itself in there. Bum, bada, bum. Right. Might 
might be easier to actually heat that up and just push it out it's obviously got itself well and truly in there that's that's a job for later on uh, this one's there so what we need to do is just give this a quick brush off with a wire brush just to get rid of some of that that's okay now obviously at some stage or other I'm in the past I must have been in there because there's insulating tape on this switch I must have had to take the switch apart and repair it in the past many many moons ago I think that switch is probably not going to be repairable so let's see if it will come apart oh hang on no, uh, yeah all the internal bits and pieces of it are all rusted away let's just snip those wires off of there for a minute we can always sort because we've got to solder some new ones on because the wires have probably had it I'm hoping that flexible wire this is I know I replaced the uh, original mains cable with something else. Let's have a look at this switch. The plastic cleaning up. Hmm. Actually, I'm wondering if this is going to be, it's brass, so in there, so if we take those inside bits out, I think that's basically just, was a spring in here. Yeah. Nothing in those bits, that's just where... Yeah, so basically it's just a spring. And you had two contacts which when you pressed... push the button, slid the contacts together and made a good connection. Like so. Alright, I think... Or oh, push... No, I, mean, I know what it did. It, it, it pushed the two roller bits into those two connections, yeah. Okay, that's all salvageable, so we can get, make the switch work. I'll just put them there and give that a bit of a clean in a minute, but I think if we clean this up. So yeah, I think that's just a, a compression spring for this bit. Let's give that a bit of a brush off. Or trigger button. So that's good, that's all repairable. Now, let's just try... Bearing that back a little bit, let's uh, get my wire strippers to bare minimum. Scrape the enamel off. Okay, okay. I think this terminal block has had it, so I'm going to cut that out as well. Uh. 
Oh yeah, that was just part of the switch, wasn't it? Yeah. So what we need to do is to just see if we've actually got still... Got ...continuity of the actual windings. Good connection. Probably not scraped enough enamel back to make a good connection, so I may have to do that with a knife. Not looking good. Um, so. Is that me? Yeah, it's reading me. Okay, let's just let's just clean back the enamel a little bit better. Yeah, thought so. Bright shiny wire in there now. Let's hold that one down with that, and then that one down with that. Ah, that's good. 57 ohms. Excellent. So that means it's still going to work. Oh, we are making progress. So, got my solder and I'm warming up just so I can. I think, I think what I'll do is I'll have another bit of a clear up. Right, well, abandoned the idea of putting this back on. I mean, to be honest, if I'm going to use this, I'm not going to need to have it all stretchy. I don't know whether this is actually going to be worth keeping, but I will put it to one side. I might find, I mean, the, I've got to change the plug anyway. So I'm going to put that out of the way and I'm going to just go with a standard uh, two core flex. And I've already got a molded plug. Uh, from an old thing that I've cut this off so I'm going to use this um, for it um, I found some bolts which hopefully uh, they will go through there and that's some bolts to replace the three that I had to drill out um, replace I've got a, a replacement um, connector so uh, the next thing to make sure that we can get working properly is this switch and I found a spring uh, I think it's a bit too much so I can probably cut that down so let's get down here a little bit closer to things and see what we can see about getting this going again. So this, uh, what we've got in the switch is uh, two plates, two rollers and a spring. And it's the rollers uh, that when they are pushed out make contact with these connections either side, just on here. And uh, so what I'm going to do is get my fibre pen and I'm just going to give these all a bit of a clean up. So let's have a go at that. Fibre pen, very useful for cleaning up contacts. Let's just extend it a little bit. In an ideal world, I would take this out and do it, but as it pushes through there and solders on, I think if I take that out, it might uh, destroy the plastic. I want to try and keep the the shell of this switch uh, in uh, as complete as possible. Difficult to see. Might actually try and get um, yeah wire brush in there is a, a little bit more effective. Yeah, that looks good. Let's get 
hold of this with a pair of pliers. That one looks fairly clean. That one's fairly clean. So, check the spring seems to be right. Spring goes over one side. These two bits go together. Like so. And then the other one puts in there. If we just pull it gently apart. And that's what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to push it apart. Which it's doing, but it's pushing it apart before I can get it in there. Let's pop that into there. Ah. Flipped around. Right, so we've got to get a spring into there. Okay, how much of a spring do we need? What sort of travel? I think probably. Half that spring will probably do the job. So we can just flatten this edge of the spring off a little bit. Like that. Pull that into there. Pull that into there. Now the lever has got like a curved edge to one side of it and a flat edge to the other. Pop out of the spring on that side. Let's try pushing it back onto the spring. Let's turn that around there. We can just hold those in place for a minute while we push that back. And hopefully, we can then push that in there a bit more. Let's get the spring at the end there. Right, and then drop that in there, hopefully. Swing that around there, and that around there. Just temporarily hold that. No, it's not going in. Ah, oh, I think I got that around the wrong way. Hmm. That seems to have latched itself in for some reason. Okay, right. I'm not going to get this to work, so I'm going to abandon this and see if I can build a trigger using a standard um, leaf switch. Because chances of getting a replacement one of those is probably nil. But anyway, I'll have a look for a search for this first and see if I can get a replacement switch for a Weller Expert gun. If I can't, then I'll have a go at the switch. Be right back. Right, so I did a search and I couldn't find uh, a switch to uh, replace this with. There's plenty of people that used to sell them, but they're out of stock, no longer made. But it did show, I did get a picture of one and it showed that I've got this, had this sort of flipped the wrong way round. So, um, and also that the spring that I cut off was a bit too short. So changing the spring for a, a bit tougher spring, we now can see that um, this contact here, which effectively is the common contact, that remains in contact. And it's just this side of it that flips across. So now when I press the switch, you can see it flips and makes contact. And that's how it's designed to work. So I'm just going to hope that uh, once I put it back together um, with um, something else to cover that gap up, the um, original part of the thing there. Perhaps gluing it back together. Seems to remain contact all the time. Let's turn it over and hold it down. And we'll put our meter on here. Let's just put my threads back on. Cut this bit. So we'll put them, uh, our probes onto the two connections. Um, put the meter on in continuity mode. So when I touch, that should work. I now clip it onto there. And hopefully clip that onto there. Hold the switch down, press it. Hey. 
we got it working brilliant stuff right so that's one little hurdle hopefully over i just got to make sure that i can keep this together so i did have tape around it before let's put some more tape around it all right let's put some more tape around let's put some tape around it I've put tape on it because if it uh, if it stops working, at least I can take it apart. If I've glued it, then it'd be difficult to take it to uh, get in and fix it again, wouldn't it? So let's just squeeze the tape between the terminals, like so. Go around the back. last bit of the tape look at that put that in the bin all right let's test it again good so stage one of the repair is it gonna work um, which way round does it go doesn't even matter actually all right I think it was that way originally yeah held in place nicely okie dokie so let's get some solder onto these wires all right solder onto there um, we need that to go I think the switch actually went the wiring went underneath the switch like so by the look of it That's one side connected. Right, let's find a piece of wire to go between there and the connector. Right, uh, got another piece of wire for use between the switch and the terminal block. Just tin it. Now, the terminal block would originally have been somewhere around there, I think. Or down here. Yeah, maybe down here. Ah, oh, perhaps. No. I don't know quite where it would have been. But... I'm just going to free float it for a minute. I'm just going 
just going to fold that into that wire over. I'm going to screw it in. Obviously, didn't push it in far enough. Think, yeah, that's made a good connection. That's okay. Switch is still working. Still got to take this <laughs> and screw out. In fact, I might just as well do that now. What I'd plan to do was to heat it up with a soldering iron and see if it'll work its way out when it's hot. There we go. That's the third rusted screw out. That's good. So let's get our mains cable. Now I don't know what the bulb was. Obviously it's going to be probably just an AC bulb on there, the lamp that was in there, it's like a little torch bulb, one of those little ones with a little lens on the end, I might have one of those in my bits somewhere, and then we'll put the live wire to the switch, Neutral to the transformer. And that should restore operation. You know, and something like that. Yeah, so I'm just going to put the two halves together. I'm let the lamps connections be separated. Okay, just for safety's sake, to hold it together, I'm going to put one of my new nuts and bolts through. Well, that will do for now. Just enough to hold it together and test it. So, are we ready? Let's just make sure we've got a low fuse in there, just in case there's any problems. We don't want to blow a 13 amp fuse, so we've got a 3 amp fuse in there. More than enough. Okay, stand by for the magic smoke.
And what we should see, if it's going to work, yeah, is that this tip gets very hot very quickly. Yay, 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 look at that. It's working. We've done it. So, all we've got to do now is to clamp the cable in there better and screw it back together, give it a bit more of a clean up. Oh, we've got to replace the bulb, haven't we? Yeah, so, okay, let's unplug it for now. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a bulb to fit in here. It's obviously a little tiny wired bulb, uh, which fits into that little uh, piece there. The only bulbs that I came across was like an old torch bulb like that, and that's obviously far too big to go in there. Um, and I've got nothing smaller. I mean, possibly even it might have been a, I don't know, a fairy light, you know, or tor uh, something like that from a Christmas tree. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I'm going to leave that in abeyance for now and just put some tape over that just to protect it. I'll see if I can find a little lamp later on, but it's not that important. Uh, we'll just do that. So let's just get uh, some tape. All right, so a couple of bits of tape, one which we'll put around that terminal. Tuck that down there. And one which we'll put around that terminal, that cable. in there as well right so now we just got to get these nuts and bolts to go through there and hopefully be the right length so uh, let's pop oh no hang on we've got the um, cable grip to sort out as well now these old cable grip screws are rusted so they won't come out in a easy hurry I should think they'll probably just tear off they are turning two short self-tapping screws that went into there obviously that uh that little hole there, of course, was for where the cable grip went. That makes sense, doesn't it? So, if I was to just put a cable grip across there, I don't know whether that's going to hold it well enough. I'm sure I've got an old plug or something I can take one off of. Let's see what I can find. Right, um, having got the two screws out of there uh, for the cable clamp, uh, I found a piece of plastic. It's flexible, but it's quite stiff plastic. And I thought I'll just cut it to shape, drill a couple of holes in there. But I'm just worried that this flexibility will allow it to pull out so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a cable tie on the inside of that wire just on there and make sure that's really really nice and tight and that will give a good grip to um, the um, so hold on to this and pull it really tight on there that's bitten into there therefore when that will pull against this plastic and really prevent the wire from being pulled out so that should be okay there screw that into place there so 
Any bigger screwdriver. Luckily the threads on this plastic are still good. I just need pushing further forward out of the way of this plastic. I've not got it quite in the right place. Now I get another new screw into there. I think, to be honest, that original cable clamp was probably just nothing more than just very hard cardboard. But anyway, that's giving it a good tug. Let's reset that switch. Wants to keep coming out, probably because of all the tape that I've wrapped around it. Let's make sure the wires are in the right place. Yeah. And then we can just make sure that wire is tucked in there nicely. It does want to come out. There we are. Okay, so let's get those screws to be the right length. Okay. Right, so we're very nearly done. Uh, we've uh, got the clamp held in there nice and firmly. That uh, clamp is in there. So now the next thing was to get some screws to go back through here. Now um, I've measured and cut off some screws to the right length. Um, just gone to try and fit them just to make sure but of course uh, the screws that I've found the nuts are too big to go in here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently uh, warm that with a soldering iron just to get it to sit down into that hole nicely and hopefully that should just be enough to just seat it in there there it goes and that should be enough to the screw to get a bite on it and then it can pull it in nice and tight yeah that's what i like to feel you just hold it yeah that's gone together nicely a little bit of excess there which I can file off, file that down and probably do that with my Dremel. Okay, so that one should, that's obviously going to have the same sort of thing. What I'll do is I'll just heat it up with a soldering iron and push it from this side. And it's hot. <laughs> right, let's hold on to it while we unscrew it. on that side. Let's see if that tightens down that a little bit more. No. Right, final try. 
Oh, let's just twist that. So those two are not touching. In fact, I think that bit, I can actually see there's a, a that bit is about to go. I'm sure I've got some spare bits. But there we are. Should you need an instant heat gun, I have one. So, hope you've enjoyed that little uh, delve into an old piece of kit, a little tool, uh, restoring it back into um, normal working condition. And I'll just say thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheerio.